Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just investigating a fault on this Jaguar XF. Basically, we've got the engine warning light on. It's sometimes knocking it down into limp mode. You can turn it off, restart it, and it clears it. Now, we've got it plugged in, a top down diagnostic machine. And in, in the engine control module, we've got PA183 fuel temperature sensor A circuit. Now, it's actually quite a common issue on these, on this engine, the 2.2. I've seen this issue quite a lot on some of the Ford Transits. Um, I've not actually had it on a Jaguar before. Now, just before we get started, and just go to find the temp sensor we'll just go into the actual data and just see what the temp sensor is actually reading now you can clear this fault code um, but it tends to come back on after about a mile or two As you can just see, we've gone into it, gone onto the voltage and the temp sensor. You can see we've actually got this five volt feed there, just the ignition's on at the minute. Um, but it's it's been stood overnight and stuck it up, but you can see it's clearly reading wrong there. It's reading minus 37. Now, I've seen these read different um, readings when they do fail. Sometimes it doesn't always throw up a fault because it actually reads, but it reads within a parameter. So it doesn't actually flag the actual engine light on. But I've sometimes seen, seen them reading at 100 degrees. And if we just start the vehicle up, just see we've now gone down to minus 40 well the fuel temperature is definitely not minus 40 but i'll just show you now where the actual sensor is located i'll put a link to the part number of the further sensor and where you can get them from and we'll just run you through how you actually replace it as well once we've replaced it we'll just come and check the data and just make sure it's reading okay as well right, so we've got a new sensor which actually comes part of this pipe just there now i'll put a link to this pipe in the description below if you want to check it out We're just coming under the bonnet with the engine cover off. You can just see the sensor in the pipe, which is just located just here, which is obviously quite easy to access. But the pipe does run all the way down and tucks around the back of the engine, so fitting it might be a little bit awkward. I'm not going to have a chance to actually replace um, film actually replacing it, but we'll just get it swapped over and I'll run you through what was involved. And once we've got it all fitted, we'll then just check the data and just make sure and just see what it's reading. Uh, just a quick update midway through it and um, basically strip the scuttle off which that's not too bad to get to get off at all um, but the pipe comes around the back and you can just see the fuel pump just located at the back here now it's got this solid cover over the top which just comes right over the top of the end of this pipe which makes it real awkward to get off um, but basically this this cover is held on by two bolts one this side and one that side which are quite long which come from the back and through you can access this one quite easily and get that out but this one on this side is really tight. If you just lever the heat shield out of the way, and just see we've got this long 8mm ratchet, flexi head ratchet there, just to get on the bolt. All I've done is been prying that out of the way, undone the bolt as quite far there, and then with it undone, you can just get a bar in there and you can just lever this cover. It'll only, it won't go upwards, it'll only slide backwards. If you just lever it backwards, it will just should just leave enough room to be able to get the pipe out and then just feed the other bit of the pipe through there. So just sort of an update with that one, just, just to get this fully out of the way, that bolt there is about that long, which is going to be really awkward. So as long as we can get it out like that, we'll just update it shortly once we've done it. And just see if you can lever it there or just in there, you can sort of just get enough clearance. So we'll try and get it out of that. Guys, you can just see, I couldn't quite film where I was taking it off, but just levering that back just left enough room and it wasn't too bad to do just had to sort of lever it while you was doing it just to pop the actual pipe out and then you need to sort of just pry it apart of this piece there just to get the actual pipe through as well um, but that's the trickiest part of the job for this now we should be able to get the pipe all swapped over right, so the pipe's fitted now i've nipped that side to eight mil up just got to nip the other side back up just to actually get the pipe through, it was a little bit tight. So I had to undo some of these fittings just to get some of the other rigid pipes out of the way, just to feed it through that. So I've just left it disconnected a minute, just where I put the scuttle all back together. But I'll just show you what the sensor's reading with it actually disconnected as well, just so you know what the default reading is on the temp sensor. Right, so just with the sensor disconnected, we can just see we've got the permanent fault code in there, still PA183. But if we just go into the engine ECU,
And you can just see the default reading. So if you've got it disconnected, it'll just permanently read 40 degrees. Now I'll just connect it up and we'll show you the difference. Obviously, once it's connected, it should now read a realistic reading. And you see, just got someone just to pop the plug on, so it's reading. And with it reading correctly now, it's 14 degrees. It's obviously a realistic, correct temperature there. And with that, we'll just clear all the fault codes out. Now, as I said before, this fault, it depends how you've got it. Sometimes it'll be permanent, depends how the sensor's failed. This one was just reading, but reading incorrectly. Um, so it will, it would clear anyway. But really, I'll know once we've got it together and we'll give it a decent run down the road for a couple of days but now that it's cleared we'll just get everything back together i'll give it a decent run and i'll just update you at the end just to show that it's definitely fixed the fault and hopefully this is, this is the same causing the same issue with it shutting down into limp mode as well but we'll just update you on that shortly yeah, so we just got back from a decent road test, running absolutely spot on. We've got no performance issues. It's boosting completely fine. We've done about six miles in it. Um, no warning lights or anything come on. We've just come back, just done a full scan. You can see it's all clear now. We've got no fault codes in there. And if we just check the fuel temp sensor reading, just see what it's reading now that the new one's been fitted as well. Right, so you can see we're reading 18 degrees now, so it's all reading spot on. It's not altering as it needs to and picking up the temperature correctly. Um, so that was all it was down to, a faulty sensor. Obviously, it comes part of the pipe, but it's not too dear. I think it was about 45 quid-ish for a genuine one from Land Rover. But I'll put a link in the description below. Um, but yeah, that's it. Obviously, as I said before, I could clear the code and it might take a few days to come back. Um, but looking at the information the temp was always wrong so regardless of that we know that it's reading correctly now but i just thought i'd put that video together in case it helped anyone if you've got the same fault code it's well worth checking into that and if you do disconnect the sensor it should default to minus 40 as well as a set setting so but yeah i hope the video helped if it did give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel thanks for watching and we'll see you next time